Welcome. In the previous study section, we discussed adolescence and development. In this study section, you will be introduced to another study section four, which is human growth and development. When you will have studied this study section four, you should be able to describe the concept of growth to include the principles. You should be able to list the theories of development. And lastly, you should be able to explain at least one theory of development. Concept of growth and development. Growth is the progressive increase in the size of a child or parts of a child. Why development is progressive acquisition of various skills, that is, abilities, such as aid support, speaking, learning, experiencing the feeling, and relating with other people. Growth and development goes together, but at different rates. Human development is a lifelong process of physical, behavioral, cognitive, and emotional growth and change. In the early stages of life, from babyhood to childhood, childhood to adolescence, and adolescent to adulthood, enormous changes take place. Throughout the process, each person develops attitudes and values that guide choices, relationship, and understanding. Let's see the principles of this growth and development. The principle of growth and development are as follows. One, principle of the direction of growth. This states that there are two types of growth gradients. That is, cephalocorda types of growth gradients and prosimodistal types of growth gradient. Let's take them one after the other. Cephalocorda growth gradient. In this growth gradient, growth proceeds from the edge before the other part of the body are developed. For example, in an infant, the brain attains 70% of its growth by the age of two years. The implication is that parents should provide adequate mental stimulation right from infancy to stimulate visual perception, toys and objects of bright color should be presented to the baby right from the first week of life. Now, prosumodista. It states that growth proceeds out from the central axis of the body. For example, the trunk develops before the bones that is, arms and legs. The second principle, differential principle. Differentiation principle stipulates that growth proceeds from simple to complex, from homogeneous and from the general to specific. For example, during fertilization, the cytos, that is the product of the fusion between the egg and the sperm cells, begin to develop first as a single cell before multiplying to form the trillions of cells that constitute the whole human body. Principle of asynchronous growth, that's number three. The principle stipulates that the emphasis of development shifts from one part of the body to another at different times. It means the various part of the body do not grow simultaneously. When the focus of growth is on a particular part of the body, the other parts rest. For example, during conception, the placenta, which is the organ that provides nourishment to the developing organism, develops before the fetus principle of the complexity of growth. That's number four. The principle states that growth is a complex process and it is intricately interwoven. In consequence, 
growth dysfunction in one area may likely affect growth in other areas. For example, a physical impairment is likely to cause emotional and social problems. Its implication is that caution should be exercised in attributing causes. This is because the origin of the problem might be diverse. Growth and development are continuous. That is the last principle. Growth may be continuous, but not always smooth and gradual. There are spots in physical growth and psychological function. Let us cite some examples. Abrupt or sudden increases in height or development of genital organs during pre-adolescence, sharp rises in vocabulary during childhood, sudden improvement during our childhood when the child is moving towards the middle age and later part of a adolescence. All this can be termed growth and development which may be continuous during this uh, period of life. Theories of development. Sensual satisfaction through genital organs, libidinal energy typically concentrated on member of opposite cells. There are different uh, theories that support the growth and development. We have the Freudian analytical theory, Erickson psychosocial theory, and Piaget cognitive uh, theory and learning theory, and theory of personality development. We will take at least one of these uh, theories during the subsequent uh, slide. Defense mechanisms. There are about eight forms of defense mechanism. We will discuss them one after the other. One, depression. It means resisting a recollection of painful memories such as death of a spouse or loss of a job or post or being jilted by a lover. Two, we have reaction formation. When somebody assumes a form of behavior opposite to those that are of concern, then we have projection. This is when somebody is attributing to others types of behavior that are difficult to acknowledge in oneself. And four, we have sublimation. This is diverting libidinal energy from sex objects to activities not related to sex. Then we have a rationalization. This is giving good reason for behavior that is weak or unacceptable. At six, we have identification. This is when somebody is adopting the characteristics of others as if they are one's own. At seven, we have displacement. This is an attempt to divert one's feeling of hostility from self to another, another people. And lastly, we have a regression. This is resulting to immature forms of behavior when frustrated. Thanks for listening. See you in the next class.